so the lawsuits are piling up and we got the lawsuit from the locksmith who went to the LA Times. Uh, the Daily Mail also covered the incident and it was a very sad incident where uh, he told the LA Times and provided the evidence that his wife had a miscarriage maybe due to the stress of her husband losing their life savings investing in watches. Now he has sued and we have will probably cover the lawsuit from a legal standpoint. I have been dealing with my my own stuff at the time, which is Anthony trying to shut down the channel with using bots, right? Um, so I'm having to re-edit some of my older videos or make them private. Um, again, that isn't me but wanting to do that on my own. That is me being forced to do that by YouTube. So let's talk about the lawsuits. Number one, it was Bob's Watches. Um, that was for a million dollars. And that was, you know, a long time ago. It seems like a long time ago. Then Bob and Wesley are supposedly creating a class action or something like that to sue. Then we had somebody suing Masasi, suing for a AP for $40,000. Then we got this guy, um, Levy. Uh, he's suing for $350,000. And as we read the lawsuits, we learn more and more and more about how Anthony is able to really convince these people. Uh, in this case, the Levy individual uh, isn't a knowledgeable, and he admits he's not knowledgeable about the watch industry. So he went to 20 different dealers and he chose Anthony. And not only did he give one watch over, he gave two watches over. So he, given the system, it kind of, it, it's weird, right? Like if you are skeptical and you're not a experienced in the watch industry, you have two items. Maybe you give one item to see if the guy can sell it and give you the cash. Then you give him the second item. That's how I would have done it. Um, but again, I don't victim blame and that's not something I'm here to do. Um, here are the, uh, there are on the lawsuit. He's claiming all the lawsuits look very, very similar. They're in the Superior Court of the State of California. Uh, this particular lawsuit is for violation of Penal Code Section 496. Intentional misrepresentation, concealment, false promise, negligent misrepresentation, conversion, unjust enrichment, breach of contract, and money had and received. What is interesting on this lawsuit that was not present in the Masasi one was Trevor and Z. Z is specifically named. And when you go over the details of this lawsuit, he is actually relevant to the law lawsuit. He is kind of the salesperson with Trevor. He is the authenticator. Um, my sources tell me that Z allegedly has a lot of money. Uh, we know that Z is married, has a wife. We know Z was splitting the Ferrari with Anthony. And we know that Z has a recent child. And he still... At this July point in time, he's still doing business at their location and, and convincing people like the consignor to give the watch to him. And the claim that the consignor Levy has is Z and Trevor, they must have known something was up because how could they not? And they still convinced. They still convinced him to give the watches up uh, there's also a Gregory in uh, unique timepieces watches off fifth and Doge one to ten have received our bought pop property belonging to plaintiff knowing that the watches have been obtained in a manner constituting theft so this is also a very interesting legal case uh, legal thing to go over is there a difference if you knew that the item was likely to be stolen, what is the threshold of that knowledge, right? How much did you have to know? Or if you didn't know it was stolen and you assume it was okay. And does the end user, in this case, the two watches were given to a dealer in Los Angeles and a dealer in New York to hold, you know, quotation marks, hold 
until Anthony could pay them back what they were owed. So what liability does those dealers have accepting a piece which is stolen? Now, did they know it was stolen? Can they be proved? This is a very interesting, you know, it's very interesting because uh, it reminds me of an episode of Pawn Stars, right? Uh, on the History Channel, where if you buy a stolen item, you have a computer database and you see if it's stolen or not. Now, if it's reported stolen, you cannot buy the item. If you do choose to buy the item after you put it in the database and you know it's stolen, then you will be at you, the pawn store, will be 100% liable to any uh, plaintiffs for the damages, meaning it has to be returned. And you, the pawn store, take the loss. Now, you can eventually sue the person who sold it to you, but again, that's court cases. A lot of this comes down to who's going to pay the court cases. Who's going to pay the attorneys? Who's going to pay the legal fees to battle this out? And here we have a scenario where do these dealers know that these watches are stolen or should have known? And if they did or did not know, does that impact whether or not they have to return the watches? Theoretically, they still own these watches, right? Uh, very interesting. Uh, so the Penal Code 496 provides that any person who has been injured by a violation of subdivisions A, may bring an action for three times the amount of actual damage of any sustained by the plaintiff, cost of the suit, and reasonable lawyer fees. So the lawyer fees could be more money. In my experience, the lawyer fees can be more money than the three hundred fifty thousand dollar lawsuit. Depends on which lawyer, right? That you're hiring. Second cause of action: intentional misrepresentation against defendants Anthony. Trevor Nadal and Z, plaintiff repeats and alleges uh, again each and every allegation set forth above as though fully set forth herein. Defendant Farrar's representations were false. Uh, he knew they were false and he made them or he made the representations recklessly and without regard of the truth. Plaintiff was harmed. Uh, and here's the interesting, another, a very this is a much more complicated legal case than the Mushashi one. Defendants Nadal and Rong, which are Trevor and Z, aided in abetting and or conspire with defendant Farrar to defraud plaintiff. Defendants Nadal and Rong were employees of defendants Farrar and TPG and were very likely familiar with the business operations and clients, meaning they were likely aware of his financial difficulties and agreed to participate in his Ponzi scheme of stealing from one client to pay another. And, and discovery is going to be very interesting. What does these people know? What does Liz and Darby know? What, what do these people know at, at this time in July when the guy's consigning a Watts? Do they know how much trouble TPG is in? Do they know how much trouble and how much money Anthony owes? Very, I mean, just fascinating. Um, fascinating, right? Concealment. Again, to Z, Anthony, and Trevor. Uh, the concealed facts, right? Aiding, abetting. The false promise, right? The false promise, again, against Anthony, Trevor, and Z. Uh, and then the, it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. I mean, this is very interesting. Um, and my, um, my main takeaway from this is it won't be the last... Once you get sued... Uh, once one person sues you, then a lot more people will come out and sue you. That's been my personal experience in dealing with lawsuits as a lawyer. Is It's like a piranha feeding frenzy. You just need the first piranha to draw out blood. And not that these guys are piranhas. That's not the correct analogy, right? But I'm just saying that um, when Bob... Bob was the first one. And he put financial constraints and i think that's what bob was trying to do i don't think bob had very strong claims uh, against anthony and i think that outside of his claim one which is that anthony recorded him without his consent in the state of california which is a two-party consent i believe it's two-party but it's either two-party or multi-party consent state which would make it illegal without him getting without trevor getting the uh, uh bob watches employee um, to consent to being recorded. That one's a slam dunk. The other five 
uh, I don't feel that strong about uh, the Masashi thing. is very interesting, but it doesn't really tell a good story. This one tells a really compelling story, right? This one is meant for a jury trial. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. But guys, will he survive these lawsuits?